good morning and welcome in. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel, subscribers, returning listeners. We are delving back into our What's Your Aura book, written by Mr. Kishala, and uh, we are due for some rain today. It is 90 degrees currently at 841. So it is, uh, if it doesn't rain, it's definitely due to be a very toasty day, it's, it's, uh, as it's already 90 degrees. Happy July 24th, 724 to everyone. Any of those, either of those numbers could be significant for you on your journey. I hope you're doing well this morning. Uh, and as always, uh, remaining in or pursuing your highest, purest, truest self. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and so our next section is do, do a crisis critique. Okay? So the role you take on, dur uh, on during a crisis tends to highlight your authentic auric energy. When the world around you seems to fall apart, the words you use, jobs you try to fill, and ways you help are all in line with your innate self. The yellow aura, who gets busy try, uh, tying up loose ends, not one Sorry, no one else. I just woke up, so I'm a little. <laughs> my brain's a little, uh, a little foggy here. I, yeah, I literally just got up, brushed my teeth, and cleansed the energy and sat down to read. So, um, did a little meditation, um, and uh, yeah. So, need to need to wake up. <laughs> the yellow aura, who physically, <laughs> who who gets busy. Tying up the loose ends no one else is thinking of, or the blue ore who begins to take care of everyone's immediate needs for comfort are examples of knee jerk reactions in a crisis that shows us who we truly are. Okay, take action. Think back to the last time there was a crisis when you had to assist in some way. So, 844 on the timer, a crisis where I had to assist. Um, uh, I'm thinking back again. I have to think back a ways because I've been isolated for, for the last couple of years. So mm, I think about times when I when I was a tax accountant and People would come to me with last-minute tax returns, last-minute uh, uh, bookkeeping that needed to be done. I think about uh, oh, I think about when when my when Judy's father died in two thousand. What was that? Two thousand. 14, 13, 13 maybe. So I was within a year of having started dialysis and she was not in Florida yet. She, I moved her to Florida when she retired in 2014. So I know it was, it was prior to that. Okay. And so I remember, uh, because I was on dialysis, I had limited income at the time, and I remember uh, running around and scrounging, trying to 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 help her. I could, I wasn't going to go because I had dialysis treatments, but I was trying to get her away to go to. Well, maybe I was. Maybe I was planning to to go because um, she. I think she was in Mississippi visiting my sister who lived in Mississippi at the time, my sister Tiffany, and, um, uh, yeah, so 
I was doing everything I could. Ultimately, I did not, uh, I was not able to help her get there um, for, for his services and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the things that we are born into certain, we are born into the family we're born into for a reason. And this lifetime, excuse me, this lifetime, I was birthed into a polygamous poverty, impoverished minded family. Okay. So a family that, that said things like we can't afford that all the time. A uh, family that grew up in the projects on welfare, food stamps, uh, uh, trading out food stamps for money, for cash, uh, government cheese. Uh, I grew up in that environment until I was, uh, when I was at the age of 11, moved with Kevin. Okay. Moved with uh, move with him and then things changed um, because he had several women working for him bringing him money so that that changed at that point in time okay so but I remember trying to scrounge around I even asked my daughter's mother if she could help me out um, but she was unwilling to do that okay so um, but I did whatever I could. I literally was going around to every car rental place, seeing what their rates were and all that sort of thing. I was running around everywhere trying to figure out what I could do to help her out. Okay. Uh, and same thing with those, with the tax clients that would come to me with last minute tax returns a week before the deadline and three days before the deadline and all that sort of thing. When my desk was already full, uh, and, you know, I'd end up working till 12, 30, 1, 30, 2 o'clock in the morning to get their taxes filed. Um, and so, yeah. What were your immediate reactions, thoughts, and actions? Okay. Uh, how do these reactions, thoughts, and actions align with your aura? Mindfully analyze how you felt during this crisis. Where do you feel, or where do you feel you did well? Where do you feel you could have done more, okay? And so, eventually, with the tax situation, it got to a point to where I would send out notifications for individual tax returns. I would send out notifications on April 1st that if you do not have your information to me by the 5th, that you will not be filing your taxes, or I will not be filing your tax returns. You would need to seek tax preparation elsewhere um, same thing with corporate returns if they did not have their corporate returns to me by March 1st which corporate did, uh, partnerships and, and S corporations are due um, March 15th okay that uh, they would need to seek that type of support elsewhere okay because I realized that I was not doing myself any justice by allowing people to come to me at the last minute and accepting them when they're running in, okay, um, knowing that the deadline, you know, they, it's the same deadline every, every year for how many decades, right, so there had to be some accountability, so I wasn't allowing them to be accountable for their actions, and this goes even to my personal life allowing others to be accountable for their actions instead of continuing to stick around them even though my aura is telling me other things about them even though um, they were causing me stress and to stay up into the next day trying to get these taxes done and da, 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 da. and I wasn't charging them anything extra when I was doing this okay I did learn to do that okay so if anyone who came to me wanted to have a tax return filed immediately or wanted a rush tax return, they had to pay an additional hundred dollars in order to get that tax return filed for their individual tax returns. Okay, and so uh, I learned to make adjustments so that I could better enjoy just it, it, be be less stressed and and, and enjoy life better even during those crunch times. Okay, and so yeah, um, I know. And then when it comes to Judy. Uh, I remember something that she told me that my aunt Carolyn, who I, whose obituary I looked up yesterday again, she was born on 10-8 of 54. Again, anything, any names, places, or, or, or 
numbers, dates, anything that I share, years that I share, anything that I share on this channel might be synchronistic for you. Okay? So my auntie, I, she's the only one I call auntie. Okay? I, I, all my others I called by their name. Lisa, Cynthia, Cynthia. It's, it's funny we say Cynthia. 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 That's, that sounds funny. Cynthia, right? They call her Jean. Her her siblings call her Jean. Um, uh, I have an uncle Marcellus. Um, yeah, any of any of my, I I even on even on Kevin's side, I call no one auntie. My aunts are Sharma, Michelle, Tyra, who's only eight months older than me, so she's really like a cousin. She's not an aunt. My grandmother had her at the age of 48. Um, and uh, so, yeah, okay. Um, but I looked at her obituary the other day, yesterday, speaking of her, and I just read through on Legacy.com. I just read through it and saw the messages and things like that that people had left. She passed. She was born on 10-8 of 54 and passed on 10-22 of 23. 10-21, I'm sorry. No, 1221, sorry, 1221 of 23. Okay, we often get the 1221 angel number card, all right? Um, and, uh, and so she was told her eldest son uh, died from suicide. He jumped off of a bridge, I believe. Um, in Joliet, Illinois. You can find that article online. And in fact, I went to look up that article again and read about him yesterday. His name is Troy Campbell. You look up Troy Campbell, uh, Desplaines River, and you will find that article. Okay? That is my eldest cousin. Okay? Uh, and uh, in Joliet, Illinois. I think I said Joliet, Illinois. But um, so. She was told, my Aunt Carol was told, that her help was leaving, okay? And that he was her biggest help, okay? And always had been. Uh, and so, I have always been that for Judy. Again, I helped her move to Florida when she retired. She told me when I was a teenager that wherever I am, she was going to be with me when she retired and so on and so forth. And when I, she's only 18, 18 years older than I am. So when, you know, when I was 16, you know, she was in her mid thirties. Okay. She was 34. So, so yeah. Okay. Um, and so I've always in any way until recent years felt obligated to help her. She really had no other help. My brother, Matthew, who passed on 10 who've passed on 8-4 of 2021 unexpectedly while incarcerated um, was unfortunately not much help to her because he dealt with mental issues from things that happened to him as that she allowed to happen to him as a child including three days in a coma being electrocuted by a cord that he bit into um, being raped uh, as a five or six year old so she allowed things to happen to him they never reported that allowed things to happen to him that adjusted and changed and I remember having a dream I don't know why I'm going on about all of that um, anyway I'll stop my rambling so anyway yeah so I know I've always been a help to her I've always been her right hand and th now her, that right hand is no longer her right hand because I have no association with her today okay but I've for 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 40 something years I was that to her okay wherever she needed to go store hospital where, where it, if she was with me I was I was right there okay I would drive for when I was a part of the religious organization the Rock of Central Florida and Sanford Florida when she lived in Daytona and I lived in Sanford I would literally or Deltona I would literally drive 30, 35 miles in the opposite direction to Daytona to pick her up and drive back to Sanford to service and drive her back to Daytona, okay, after service. So I would go out of my way to help her, okay? 
And so um, she doesn't have that help today. She doesn't have that assistance today. Um, but again, that's me clearing out my energy and removing those who no longer serve my highest good. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah. Some, some very good lessons learned through my overextending myself. Okay. Again, I was an overgiver for 46 years and nine months. Crisis times are not always pleasure to think about, but understanding what you do and how you contribute in a crisis will help you will help you bring more of that and to future situations where you are needed your specific role is unique and necessary no one can do everything in a time of crisis and that was me okay and your contribution matters capture the moment on camera your audience your audience, your something about our audience, uh, content creators, 1607 on the timer. Your authentic self isn't just an action or a definition, it's a feeling. Capturing that feeling in the bottle isn't exactly possible, but getting it on camera is. As you go about finding your authentic energy, you are bound. Uh, you are bound to overcome with uh, to be overcome with a feeling of something bigger than you the connection that exists between you and the universe the turquoise aura feeling grounded in the woods or indigo auras splashing happily in the waves may feel connected to the very heart of the universe itself Okay. Yet the other day when I was on my walk, it had rained and there was a older gentleman and a younger kid who were standing in a puddle of water and they were splashing it together. Okay. Uh, taking action and that to me that paints a picture of his younger self, the older gentleman's younger self. Okay, And vice versa, the kid's older self and never losing that kid-like, child-like, like fun free mentality okay they were wearing flip-flops i would not be splashing in a puddle with my flip-flops because that feeling of water in my flip-flops is something that's annoying to me so i would do that but i would have some other type of shoe on <laughs> uh, taking action okay take a selfie or a picture of the environment you are in during a joyful moment when you feel totally aligned with yourself and the universe as a whole. Place this photo where you can see it often, set it at, uh, as your phone background or post it on a bulletin board or on a fridge. Every time you look at the photo, think about how far you've come in reaching your authentic self and how this feeling is that goal okay give yourself gratitude for the beautiful energy you allow to live within you you may repeat i am filled with self-love or some other phrase you design okay i have a couple of those affirmations that i say regularly one of them is uh it's always working out for me, okay? I tell myself that often. It's always working out for me. It's always working out for me. It's always working out for me. It's always working out for me, okay? Um, one of the others is as above, so below. As above, so below, okay? As above, so below. I often also remind myself of my esoteric position um, uh, with highest divine white light okay and my and other ascended masters I remind myself of these things okay the picture the physical picture that comes to mind is the picture um, and it is on YouTube it is on the channel I used it as one of the background or one of the whatever's for the excuse me Bert um, for the picture, background, whatever you want to call it, for a video, that video is my on 7-7 of 17, 
or seven seven of of, of twenty four this year. <laughs> um, uh, my anniversary, seventh anniversary for my dial for my kidney transplant, okay, and ending dialysis. And so that picture, I am wearing a a, 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 a black cap with shades, and uh, the cap is a U.S. Army sergeant cap that I'm wearing in that photo, okay. And I have this big smile on my face. I was in the car one day back. I probably took that picture in 2000, probably. Um, maybe 2019. And uh, I use that photo a lot because that that is me. In my authentic self, that is me. The big smile, The the that is me. So I use that photo a lot, um, especially for that day. Um, and so, or, or, or for, you know, anything that I post that's, 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 I don't know, that, that gives me that feeling, just what we're reading about here. Okay. That points to your true self when you're in that moment. And, um, I was feeling, I, I don't remember exactly what was going on that day, but I remember that particular day and, um, uh, yeah. I, I was doing well. Business was going good. Uh, I was feeling great. And so, uh, so yeah. All right. Uh, capturing a moment of pure joy and alignment is a way to capture a little piece of yourself. Seeing it as a reminder of the feeling you have when you are connected to the energy that fills feeds you, gives you unconditional love, and validates who you are authentically. The knowledge that no one can shake you, no matter what happens, is precious, okay? And I I generally carry that type of energy with me. Uh, oh, we're on to the next chapter, chapter two, so I think we'll stop here. I didn't realize that we were that close to chapter two. Um, so yeah, so I like to stop at certain sections. I don't like to go into a new chapter connected to an old chapter or a previous chapter in the same video. Okay. That might be, that process might be relevant or someone carrying the old into the new. No, don't carry the old into the new. It's 903 at 92 degrees. So it was 902 at some point at 92 degrees. Right? So synchronicities today. Um, 11 might be significant for you. You might be a master builder or master number 11 when it comes to your birth chart. Uh, or you could be a Scorpio or Sagittarian. Okay. So thank you so much as always for tuning in and moving forward. What we have to look forward to tomorrow, by the way, I generally post things in the morning because it's cooler and more comfortable during that time. So I have no problem sitting for an extended period of time and reading. Once it gets hot, again, I'm in an RV. So once it gets hot, it gets a bit more difficult to sit still for long periods of time. Okay, so tomorrow we will be covering, in chapter two, we will be covering auras and spiritual and psychic connections. Okay, so thank you so much as always for tuning in. My name's Nehru. This is Esoteric Guidance, helping us all become our highest, purest, truest self possible. As always, be encouraged.